Hello students, today I am going to talk about a topic which is very interesting and significant uh, when we start learning about the transition from the Paleolithic to the Mesolithic and then the Neolithic phases of human history and we are introduced to this um, concept and importance of pottery in human history. So let's start. We are all familiar with the Neolithic phase as a significant phase of transformation in human lifestyle when the shift was made from hunting gathering to domestication of plants and animals. When we study the different technological innovations that accompanied the Neolithic, one of the innovations that's mentioned is the beginnings of the use of pottery. Usually this is connected with the fact that now man was required to store and process plant foods. In fact, the earliest evidence of pottery is not from the Neolithic period, but rather it starts much earlier. In some cultures, we find that man was using pots from the Upper Paleolithic period itself, especially in areas where he was exploiting wild cereal grasses and needed to store and process them. Thus, we have pottery vessels which have been discovered in dated to about 20,000 BP in China, 10,500 BC in Japan, connected with the Jomon culture and 14,000 BC in the Russian Far East. The earliest pottery was handmade and the next stage was with the use of the potter's wheel to mold the pots into desired shapes. The, the potter's wheel came to be used in more advanced Neolithic cultures. However, pottery in itself was a technological step forward for humankind because first there is a stage where you have handmade pots then second is with the wheel, so it's also connected with the use of the wheel. But pottery also required to be baked so that it's hardened and can be used for processing plant foods and storing them. So it required the use of fire under controlled conditions in the potter's skins. And it also required a particular use of the mixture of clay with certain other materials like straw, etc. And shaping it and firing it to make it harder. The use of pottery has certain other significant implications. It was a psychological jump for humans because 
it shifted their perspective from short term planning which is usually associated with the hunter gatherer societies to the long term planning and the most obvious visible uh, evidence of this long term planning is the fact that provisions for storage were made and pottery was used for storage for historians pottery is remarkable evidence connected with early human cultures and it continues once it starts the use of pottery continues throughout history in fact we still have of course the use of pottery in our households for studying history it's a new kind of source material and it offers a significant insight into culture technology economy religious patterns of human society that phase of neolithic is important because that's when that earliest step is taken from hunting gathering to of course domestication but also to various other kinds of innovations in human culture for example including stone tool technology or the fact that humans were gradually now shifting towards settled rural lifestyle and this had significant implications in terms of social structures and religious beliefs as well as a source this is a durable material and in the pre pottery phase the human habitations largely leave for us the sources in terms of stones some habitation remains and the human animal remains and some plant matter pottery is significant also because the territorial spread of pottery a certain kind of pottery is taken to indicate a territorial spread of a culture and usually like language indicates cultural similarity pottery is also taken to indicate cultural similarity and this is reflected in the persistent use of technology in colors shapes and in the painting patterns that may be used on certain kinds of pottery styles thus in prehistory many of the cultures are named after the types of pottery 
on the typical type of pottery that is found associated with that culture. For example, painted grey culture, which is usually connected with the later the big phase in Indian history. And though many pottery styles are found in the painted grey culture sites, but the typical new uh, and specific pottery style is the painted grey Pottery also gives us significant clues about the diversity in a human culture. The trade or any other kinds of connections that may have existed between two cultures it is a common grave good and is associated with the dead neolithic people smashed pottery in funerary contexts which indicated some of their beliefs related to the afterlife. And finished pottery would usually have some sacred motives on it. The advancement in human technology also led humans to imagine themselves in new ways as agents who could manage or transform nature from its raw to a finished form. And pottery was one such technological innovation where a naturally occurring material or different kinds of materials were completely transformed through human mediation. Pottery was also associated with the household and as a personal objects and They facilitated this ideological transformation of the humans from the nomadic hunting gathering mind to the settled Neolithic mind. In the subcontinent we can see the earliest evidence of pottery in certain Neolithic sites we cannot do all the sites and uh, pottery sites but I'll take you through to some of the significant pottery styles of the Indian subcontinent. Now this starts. The Neolithic is associated with some early sites in the subcontinent and Mehergarh is one of those sites which has uh, furnished evidence of the early Neolithic transformation and the dates are provided here in the slide. Uh, our concern is more with the pottery here. So Mehrgar has a ceramic period, then it has a phase of handmade pottery and there's wheel made pottery finally going on to refined painted wheel made pottery which is connected with the Calcolithic period and further 
कि मैं कर रही तेरा पॉलीक्रोम बेस एंड गोइंग ऑन टू द रेड वेयर विद द पीपल लीफ डेकोरेशन यूजुअली कनेक्टेड विद द भारत सिविलाइजेशन एंडिंग इन द ग्रे वेयर सो यू सी वन साइड इट्स एल्फ हाउ द डिफरेंट कल्चरल ट्रांजेक्शंस आर रिफ्लेक्टेड in the pottery then we have other sites in the northwest kilagul muhammad it also has the a ceramic period then it has hand made basket marked pottery going on to black on red ware with geometric designs gechi bag ware which was a fine thin bark ware connected the gechi bag ware is usually connected with the pre harappan period the relevant dates are given here and the location is in the flipkota valley all these sites are very significant because there are also they start with the neolithic and they go on into the pre harappan phase and have uh, left significant clues about the transition to the bronze age civilization and there's some sadak it has a kechi bag ware also it has a kweta ware which again is a prominent and beautiful pre harappan neolithic ware buff color ware with black decoration jars and bowls uh there's also another kind of ware connected with damsadak which is a phase mohammed grey ware uh, which is remarkable for shallow plates deep bowls geometric and naturalistic designs this the damsadak site finds are contemporary to the kilagul mohammed 4 phase which has 3000 bce as a midpoint this is also in the kweta valley and there's anjir and siadam which has fine wheel made buff ware with burnished slip red slip ware and burnished grey ware and the gau ware which is red pottery with black painted designs rana gundai is another important site in the lora lai valley it is wheel made buff to red black painted where and in fact has paintings of animals like the bull and black bull the null pottery is again a significant cult represents a significant pre harappan culture it's polychrome variety of shapes can be seen disc bases narrow mouth pots carinated pots straight wall jars open bowls geometric and naturalistic designs painted with blue red or yellow kuli pottery is elongated has particularly these drawings of elongated cattle with large round eyes set in a landscape and it has been found at many sites very significant pre harappan culture zone is connected with the hapra ware which has as many as 99 sites found in punjab haryana hisar and belana hapra ware was large and small vessels with coating of mud mixed with pieces of pottery vases and it has particularly vases with black slip on the exterior and this is the time period between 3500 3300 3800 bce the cholistan area of the now dried up hagar hakra river valley we can see some of these examples this is the mehargarh bowl uh, from period 3 this gray one is from mehargarh period 7 kwetha where this is the grey ware beaker tomb beaker found in a tomb 
it's a null period. This is also a null period fragment. These are the jars from Mehargarh, period 7, Quetta Bear. This figure 14 is Mehargarh, period 5, Polychrome Beakers. And these dishes are the null. These are the kechi baked beakers from a tomb. The other significant Neolithic sites are in the Gangetic plain. We have Koldeva and Mahagar. They have handmade pottery knit marked or cord marked and also plain red ware and black and red ware. Burzahom and Gufkral in Kashmir they are Contemporary to Matriya or Harappan period, coarse handmade pottery in grey, red, brown and buff colours. Handmade pottery in a dealer's black burnished ware. In the northeast, the important site of Dal Darjali Harding has handmade grey and dull red pottery with cord marks. And there are other sites like Sarutaru and Natrik. Handmade buff brown and grey ware, cord impressed, and handmade cord marked ware. So, some of the earliest pottery in the subcontinent is a cord impressed pottery ware, which also shows influence from the East and is typical of the Neolithic of Eastern India. The above picture is the pottery from Jowling Hadar. And this pot is actually a much later pot. It's from Lumbini. It's called Impressed Way from Lumbini. Contemporary to the Buddhist period. So the cord Impressed Way is continued into the later phases. Now there are various sites which are connected in fact with the South Indian Neolithic cattle keepers, Utnur, Kukkal, Kodikal, etc., Kutehal. They have handmade coarse pottery at Utnur, burnished grey or buff ware, sometimes with post firing designs, that is, after you fire it, make it hard and you put some designs on it, painted in red ochre. There's also a ware found with red, black or brown dressing applied to it before burnishing. And the portrait vertical was coarse and made red and grey ware. The location is the Raichur and Shorapur Doabs between 2900 and 1000 BCE. This is the Kodihal pottery. These are the ash lumps here. You can see the ash lumps, uh, how we know, all know, are connected with the uh, cattle pens of the Neolithic, of South Indian Neolithic cattle keepers and their periodic ritual burning of the accumulated uh, cow dung. Very basic coarse wares you can see this is the black and red ware, the others are brown. Burnished is when you sort of make it shiny, smooth and sh gives it smooth and shiny surface if you continue to rub it as the process of burnishing. When we move on to the Calvilithic sites and styles, in the Jodhpur area is the Ganeshwar culture. It had the fired, handmade and wheel made pottery with a bright red slip. 
in western rajasthan then there is the ahar banas culture with 90 sites ahar pottery is black and red where with linear and dotted designs in southeast rajasthan The dates we can see are contemporary with Mitchell Harappa. The Nishwar culture is also contemporary with the Mitchell Harappa period roundabout. Then Balathal was part of Ahar culture. It's one site, important site. Balathan is a Many kinds of pottery styles have been discovered at Balathal, which include in red, tan, black and red, buff colored pots. There's a reserve stick where with pots first treated with a thin red wash and then a thick dark slip on which designs were made with a comb while wet. So then there's a plain red wear also, a burnished grey wear and a plain grey wear. So we can see that in all the styles that we've seen, the pre-early Harappan contexts are the Hakra Ware sites and pottery, Hakra Ware pottery, mid-4th millennium BCE. That's one cultural zone and the other is the Kodijin cultural zone, uh, which has more individual variations. The Hakra Ware pottery we can see in the Cholistan area of Gagar Hakra Valley which has some few sites outside of this zone also where the uh, Akra ware has been found like Harappa, Konal and Bhairali. The sites range from 5 hectares to 20 to 30 hectares in size and the pottery also shows regional variation. Example at Bhairana there is a great variety in pottery styles including a mud applique ware, incised ware, tan slipped ware, burnished black ware, bichrome ware and red and black ware. In the Code DG in cultural zone, we saw various sites Code DG, Mehergarh, Gumla, Rehman, Dehri, Harappa, Cholistan, Kalibangan. Its typical pottery is wheel made, painted with brown paint. Designs include the horn, DT, people, leaves and fish scales. And some of these continue into the mature Harappa. This also has regional variations. For example, Kalibangan has many varieties like red or pink pottery with black white designs of scrolls, plants, fish and cattle. And these similar styles we see later on in the mature Harappan period as well. So here are some examples of the Nalware, the Kuli Ware, the Kot Dijian and the Soti, where, where you can see these fish patterns and beautiful pottery. And here is that cattle with that big humped cattle and prominent eyes and horns. Then, of course, we have the, this is the Hakra way example of the Hakra way where the deer have been drawn. And this is what we'll see later on is the perforated jars from Macho Harappa. Jars with these holes in them. There are some debates about what it was used for, but possibly for some kind of uh, processing of um, uh, food materials may be related to milk or some have been considered to be related to some uh, fermentation process. Now mature Harappan pottery is a typical red ware but it's a more sophisticated technology and um, it's standardized and mass-produced. 
it had a great variety of shapes like a dish on stand, a vase with an S profile, cylindrical perforated jar. This is the cylindrical perforated jar. Goblet with a pointed foot. The main pottery is black on red ware. There's also grey ware, buff ware, and black and red wares. It was mostly wheel turned. And it is typically fine, sturdy wheel made with bright red slip and black design. You can see this is a larger jar. The geometric, the, the decorative patterns are, are of simple horizontal lines. There are, you can see these are simple horizontal lines. They are geometric patterns, pictorial motifs, fish scales. These are like the fish scales. And people leaves. Here you can see the leaves, circles. They use large jars for storing and there seems to be a ceremonial use of elaborately, elaborately painted pots. And some of the pots are more fine, which indicates uh, limited use. And there were also glasses, drinking glasses and some pots for cooking. The late Harappan cultures also have specific types of pottery. We have the Jukar culture, a Jukar, Chamudaro, Amri, with buff ware, with red or cream slip painted in black, showing some connections with Macho Harappa and Singh. Then we have the Symmetry 8 culture with sites in Harappa, Bahawalpur. It shows continuity of Harappan pottery with some new forms and designs. In particular are the burial urns, you know, these pots in which you, they were burying human beings. And these burial urns had naturalistic designs, leaves, trees, stars. And there are also, the new designs include some mythological motifs, peacock with a human form, bulls or cows with plant-like attachments on their back. And the symmetry H culture sites have been found in Pakistan, Punjab and Gagar, Agra Valley. And these, it shows some change either in the pot pattern of the declining late Harappans or interaction with a new kind of culture or even migration of uh, persons of, uh, in connected with different culture because the, very significantly the designs change on the pottery. Then there's a Kandahar grey culture with these sites. Uh, Lo, uh, Lobanar, Barkot, Hundai, etc. Again, here the grave goods have the presence of significant types of Pottery, in pottery, buff bread, grey pottery in many shapes like tall goblets, pedestal cups, beakers with flared mouths, bottles with long and slender necks. The area of the Gandhar grave culture is between Peshawar and Chitral on both sides of the Hindu Kush. There are other very significant sites, Sangol, Daderi, Banavali. Sanoli, Hulas, these, some of these areas is between Satluj and Yamuna have yielded around 563 late Harappan sites. These are small sites under 5 hectares which shows a rural lifestyle but continue with mud brick and fire altars at Sangol which is Calcolithic also so they are using copper and handmade and wheel made pottery has been found with cream wash or bright red slip with geometric and naturalistic designs in black. The late Harappan sites in Gujarat are also numerous 120 sites and they have pre lustrous red wear, lustrous red wear at some sites in the area of Kutch and Saurashtra. Important site 
is the Ahmabad, the Deccan. And the graves have been found there lined with mud bricks. They are fine red ware with linear and geometric designs painted in black. And shapes like dish on stand, bowl on stand, dishes and vases. They also have burnished grey ware and two button shaped seals with her up on writing, four inscribed pot shirts, stone tools, terracotta beads. So these are significant finds connected with the late Harappan cultural phenomenon. In the Calcolithic phase, we find also other kinds of prominent pottery styles, particularly the ochre colored pottery which has been found at various sites in the Indo-Gantetic divide and particularly concentrated in Western UP. Like Astanapur, Hechatra, No. The ochre colored pottery is a wheel made pottery with thick red slip which is sometimes decorated with black bands and when you rub your hand on it, it leaves an ochre colour because of the slip. The western zone sites of the OCP like Jodhpur, Jodhpur, Mitatral show Harappan cultural remnants and the eastern zone like Atranji Lal Kela does not show any Harappan continuity. Various sites have been found stretching from Upper Ganga Valley to Bengal in Orissa, Haryana, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Karnataka, Kerala, UP, all over, which have copper hoards. So about 90 sites. These are calculated sites. And in some of these, the ochre colored pottery has been found. The other pottery style that was that shows a lot of regional variation and was spread in various various sites is the black and red ware. In many sites, the black and red ware occurs between the OCP and the painted grey ware. So it seems to be a uh, phase placed between the pre-Vedic and the painted grey ware which is connected with the Vedic culture. So, thus we can see the whole diversity of pottery styles that were evolved in the Indic zones and we have also seen how pottery is significant for the societies that began here and there and also as a source for reconstruction of history historic.